Uh, greetings to all my colleagues, the uh, candidates of the MRCS Part B examination. In the last lesson, we discussed uh, the main stem of a major station in the critical care section of the basic knowledge of the MRCS Part B exam. And uh, as I mentioned in the last lesson, please, if you did not see the last lesson, you can find it in this channel. So please see it before so you can understand what's going on here. The, the uh, way of thinking, as we mentioned, uh, in the basic knowledge stations is that there is a main stem and there are branches. So the main stem, the station was about diverticulitis and that was the very section of the station and in this lesson today we are going to discuss the uh, ferris branch or the ferris major branch because as we mentioned before there are many branches of every branch and every main stem so uh, we are going to mention the major branch uh, which is about sepsis and uh, uh, sepsis is uh, a general concept that uh, will be used to, to to, to uh, mention a certain process that something is going wrong because some infective reason or something like that. Okay, so it could be used for, in general, when they say sepsis, you as a surgeon, you understand what is going on there, you understand the process. And on the other hand, sepsis can be a part of the classification of the whole process. So in this branch of the station, you will find four main parts, okay? Four main parts, four main questions. And from those questions, some other questions may show up, okay? So let's start with the first question in this branch, or the main branch. Uh, it's, it will be about sepsis. The first question will be about the classification of uh, sepsis or the septic process, okay? And uh, within this uh, section, first section, there will be some sort of, let us say, uh, some sort of uh, inter or inside uh, questions and definitions that you want to know, okay? So regarding the septic process, there are four stages. And the first stage will be the SIRS or the systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So the examiner is going to ask you, what is the meaning? What do you mean when you say septic inflammatory uh, response syndrome or SIRS? So the definition will come from the same word, okay, or the same sentence or statement. So systemic inflammatory response syndrome means that it is the body's systemic response to inflammation. But there is a very important part that I want to add to this definition, and most of the people miss it. And that part is, there is no known source of infection. So the definition will be, systemic inflammatory response syndrome is the body systemic response to inflammation with no known source of infection. This is the definition. Okay, so it's a syndrome. They are going to ask you what are the criteria of SIRS. So there is one criterion which is systemic, two criteria which are respiratory, one criterion which is uh, which is circulatory, and another last criterion which is immunological or uh, it regards the blood picture. Okay, so firstly, systemically the temperature will be affected. So, number one, the temperature will, will be either equal or more than 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or less than 96.4 Fahrenheit. Okay? Or, by the way, I don't know if I, if I change the numbers. It's 100.4, I think. Okay? And uh, more than 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or less than 96.8 Fahrenheit. This is number one. There are two respiratory points in SIRS that you need to, to, to check them when you are diagnosing SIRS. And these are either it is or and in the respiratory issue. So either the respiratory rate is more than 20 
per minute or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less than 32 millimeter mercury so uh, why 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 does the carbon dioxide goes down they may ask you this question and you are going to mention that there is the kidney there is high respiratory rate so you are washing carbon dioxide co2 <sighs> you are washing carbon dioxide okay so what may happen in this case here carbon dioxide is the main component of the carbonic acid which is the acidotic component of respiratory acidosis so when you wash the carbon dioxide you are washing an acid okay and in this way what may be the result there and if they are they want to complicate the situation they may ask you this question what may be the result metabolically or regarding the ph or the, the abgs here the situation will be uh, in sris will be in the beginning at least it is respiratory alkalosis okay so either the respiratory rate is more than 20 or the partial pressure of co2 is less than 32 millimeter mercury circulatory uh, part is related to the uh, heart rate okay so the heart rate is usually more than 90 beats per minute okay lastly we will come to the immunological component of the sris it's related to the wbc's okay the wbc's will be either more than eleven thousand or less than four thousand or there may be more than 10 percent bonds in the film okay so this is the very section or the very stage of uh, the septic process okay let us go to the next stage next stage is sepsis itself so first sirs all these things happens it is different because the source of infection is not known this is very important to know okay in sepsis what will happen you will find two or more of the criteria of sirs or systemic inflammatory response syndrome two or more okay plus there is a known or a suspected source of infection this is the only difference okay so every stage you are going to move in you are going to take the previous stage and add something to it so here you are going to, to take two or more criteria of the sirs and you are going to add that a known source or a suspected source of infection this is sepsis finished third stage or phase of septic process is severe sepsis okay so in severe sepsis as i told you you are going to take sepsis it is sepsis plus one or more of three things number one there may be uh, let's say signs of organ damage or failure this could be there it could not it depends okay but it is uh, if it is found it's one of the criteria of severe sepsis the second point that you may find in addition to the to the sepsis criteria in severe sepsis is that you may find uh, hypotension okay so well, what they mean by hypotension here they mean that the systolic blood pressure may be less than 90. and there is the third last criterion that you may find in severe sepsis uh, mostly you find it especially in the late cases that the lactate may be four millimole per liter or more okay so this is this is regarding the severe sepsis now we are going to go to the fourth and the last stage or phase of the septic process the last phase is the shock the septic shock which is the severe part which has a very high mortality okay so in shock what are you going to find there you are going to find severe sepsis things there is severe sepsis there plus a persistent hypotension and this is the fatal component of the septic shock so this is the fairest part sirs sepsis severe sepsis and septic shock 
Okay, finished. Let us go to the next question or the next section in this branch. Okay, they are going to ask you what are the differences. Last point, there was septic shock. So I'm going to start from that point and they will go move to the other section. What are the differences between septic shock and hypovolemic shock? Actually, to be aware, uh, the examiner will be a surgeon, okay? And uh, you are a surgeon also. So, uh, most of the surgeons like hemorrhagic shock more than hypovolemic shock, although there is a difference, yeah. Because, for example, if you have a patient with a burn and he has a burn of more than 60%, he will lose water, right? Plasma, okay? But because surgery is directly related in our minds to blood as surgeons, they like, they may ask you what is the difference between septic shock and hemorrhagic shock. It's okay, no problem, okay? Just deal with it, uh, accept it, okay? So, to understand this point, okay, you want to know that in shock, there is one main uh, shared criteria. There is one feature that is found in all types of shock. What is that? It is hypotension, okay? With the fairest point. But you want to know why there is hypotension. It is shock, so there is hypotension. So you want to know why there is hypotension in septic shock and why there is, what is the reason? What is the cause of hypotension in septic shock? And what is the cause or the reason of hypotension or low blood pressure in uh, hypovolemic shock or hemorrhagic shock, okay? So let me give you an example here. So this is a cup of water, okay? So I want you to imagine that this cup of water is your circulatory system, okay? These are the arteries, veins, capillaries, arterioles, venules, everything that contains and your heart, that contains your blood and plasma and, and uh, your circulatory components, okay? So this cup actually should be, should be always filled with its components, right? So it should be filled all the time. So I'm going to fill it now. Okay. So your circulatory system is full now. There is no shock, okay? What happens in the status of septic shock? What happens in the status in, in septic shock is that the main, the main thing, the main feature in septic shock is vasodilation. So your container becomes, or the patient's container becomes big, wider, okay? I'm going to drink this so I, it will show up to you better. So the container will be bigger, there's vasodilation. So when you put this water, same volume in this container, the container will be almost empty. You see, it's always almost empty. So in septic shock, you have the same amount of blood or water or fluid in your circulatory system, but the container becomes bigger, wider. So relatively, you have shock, but the fluid is the same, okay? So what happens in the hypovolemic shock? In hypovolemic shock, actually, you lose the volume. The patient loses the volume, so the circulation becomes empty. And when the circulation becomes empty, shock, shock ensues, happens, okay? You understand now. You understand this already, but this will stick to your mind uh, when you come to the exam and the, the stressful conditions. When you remember these cups, uh, I think that you can remember all the other, other answers of, of, of the station, of this part of the station or this branch, okay? So what are uh, the question is, what are the differences between septic shock and hypovolemic shock? The differences are as following. There is vasodilation in septic shock, there is vasoconstriction in hypovolemic shock. This is the main thing according to which everything will be uh, regulated in, your, in the patient's body, okay? So number one, there is vasodilation, the body will be warm in septic shock, while in hypovolemic shock, there is vasoconstriction, systemic vascular constriction, so the body will be cold, okay? 
there will be pyrexia in septic shock. While, because of vasodilation again, while in hypovolemic shock, the patient will have cool extremities, will be clammy, okay? Uh, there will be, in septic shock, there will be bounding peripheral pulses, okay? Here, in the uh, uh, hypovolemic shock, there will be sinus tachycardia as a response to increase the cardiac output. And uh, there will be slow capillary refill because actually there is severe vasoconstriction and less fluid. So there will be no slow refill as well, more than two seconds, okay? Definitely in both, there will be hypotension, but hypotension is an early criterion or feature in septic shock, while it is a late feature in hypovolemic shock, okay? Well, the patient in septic shock will not be pale, he will be red actually because of vasodilation, but in hypovolemic shock, the patient will be pale, he will be anxious, the JVP will be low and the mucous membranes will be dry because the patient lost his water, he lost his intracapillary and intracirculatory fluid due to some reason, bleeding or anything, okay? So uh, this is the second part of this branch of the station, difference between septic shock and between uh, hypovolemic shock. Let us move now to the uh, third part. It is a very easy part if you could focus well. They are going to ask you, how are you going to raise the BP? Because septic shock, the main important part of it is that you are being going to be unable to raise the blood pressure. Whatever you do, the blood pressure will be low. Persistent hypotension, okay? So what are you going to do to improve the blood pressure of this patient? And the answer will be the equation. There is an equation. If you know this equation, everything will be in place. Blood pressure equals cardiac output multiplied by systemic vascular resistance. So BP equals CO multiplied by SVR, okay? So if I want to raise the product, the blood pressure, what am I going to do? Either I raise one of those components, cardiac output or systemic vascular resistance, CO or SVR, or I raise both to have a better result, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to raise the cardiac output. So how are you going to raise the cardiac output? This is the question I've told you. Any branch has many branches with frequent questions because this is a major station and the mistakes are not allowed, okay? So how are you going to raise the cardiac output? You are going to answer, I'm going to increase the preload. How are you going to increase the preload? I'm going to increase to administer fluids. And the best fluid, as you know, is RL, if, you, if it is found in your hospital or emergency uh, room. Uh, if, you do, if, you, if you do not find it, then you can't give anything that just to increase the volume, okay? So this regarding the cardiac output. So how can you increase the systemic vascular resistance? You are going to answer by using vasopressors. What is the best vasopressor for septic shock? It is noradrenaline, okay? Noradrenaline or norepinephrine, okay? They may ask you uh, why it is good because uh, you are going to mention because if it is alpha adrenergic effect, this in case that they want to go deep with you in this station, okay? So let us go now to the last part of this branch of the station, septic process or sepsis. They are going to ask you, okay, how are you going to treat septic shock? In the previous question, you mentioned how will you raise the blood pressure? And if you do that, actually, you did almost more than 50%. But there are six points that you are going to mention in the treatment of septic shock, okay? Firstly, septic shock is a critical situation. This is an emergency. So in every emergency, in the surgical exam or any exam, medical exam, you are going to mention, number one, I'm going to follow the A, B, C, D, E protocol. This is number one, okay? Number two, I'm going to make 
respiratory support, which is a part of the B in the ABCDE, right? So respiratory support, they may ask you, how can you do that? How, how, how will you do that? Uh, actually, before that, you want to mention that as a part of the ABCDE, you want to mention that uh, I want to manage this patient in an HDU or an ITU, okay? So that you are going to be more professional because this is what happens in real, in real life. Okay, so the second point after ABCs is respiratory support. They may ask you, how are you going to do it? It could be ventilative or it could be penit uh, invasive or non-invasive. Okay, finished. Third point, circulatory support. You already mentioned that in the previous answer. So you want to raise the blood pressure. You want to improve the cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. We discussed that already. Fourth, you want to make renal support because if there is severe shock with severe hypotension, you have renal failure. So what are you going to do? What is your aim in renal support? Your main target is to keep the urinary output in a rate of not less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour. All of you know that, right? Okay. How can you keep this urinary output well? By raising the cardiac output. Uh, you, how you can raise the cardiac output? Increase the preload. How you increase the preload? Fluids, as you know. And the next point here is, and most of the people miss this point, the fifth point, which is about nutritional support. And they are going to ask you, actually there is a station regarding nutrition, separate. But here also they are going to ask you, how are you, how are you going to support the nutrition in this patient. There are two options, either enteral or parenteral. So what is the better for him if it is possible the enteral is better? Why? Because in parenteral, by using veins I mean, if you use parenteral, uh, most probably uh, bacterial translocation in the intestine will happen and the situation will get worse. And you already have enough sepsis here. Last point is, and actually it is a major point because the reason of all this problem was an abscess or an infection, you want to treat the infection. You want to start with broad spectrum antibiotics, then after the culture results come, you can actually be more targeted, okay? So septic shock itself may lead to another complication or sepsis itself may lead to another complication which will also be mentioned in this station which is a very long station actually still the time is nine minutes you have to answer all the questions to get the full mark so one of the complications is dic disseminated intravascular coagulation this complication actually will be discussed in the next lesson okay so see you there and good luck